Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and we're finally into the conclusion of the Bill and Ted film franchise. Since I just reviewed the first two films yesterday, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and you know the story, you know, where Bill and Ted as two dim-witted teenagers from San Dimas who are flunking and failing their history class, so they were assigned to do a report in order for them to not fail, yet alone high school, not to mention Ted, you know, going straight to military academy in Alaska, so that Blake supports their garage band, the Wild Stylings. So with the help of the citizen leader of the utopian society, Rufus, who's a time traveler, you know, through the, the phone booth that they got, to actually help them out, pass their history report by collecting all these historical figures, enough to have time to, to do their presentation so they can pass the grade. Then we got Bogus Journey, where both Bill and Ted are, are just getting ready to practice for the annual Battle of the Bands at Cedric Auditorium in San Dimas, California, even though they already uh, own the, their, they, even though they created the utopian society of themselves, and since they became so successful with their music, and have rebelized everything, only to be taken over by a former gym teacher and terrorist, uh, Christy Dumalos, who has revenge against them by sending out their evil robot replicas of themselves to execute them, to stop them, and alter the entire history of them. So that means their evil selves are just going to go around doing their plans, you know, such as dumping the their girlfriends, and the medieval princesses, you know, Joanna and Elizabeth, you know, trashing everything, and of course, do everything Chris, uh, you know, just controls before Bill and Ted, who's now being sent to hell. They meet uh, Death, who's the Grim Reaper, joining in with Station. It was an alien duo, but they put together into one to actually build their good replicas of themselves as robots to stop them and save CM Demons and all, and also <laughs> save themselves and the princesses and all. Okay. So yes, both of these films were excellent, no doubts, audacious films that you just never get tired of. But now comes the third installment in the franchise, Bill and Ted Face the Music. It's the long-awaited sequel that they have been working on for pretty much 10 years now. I mean, although I, I think they were sort of had an earlier planning uh, before that, but I know I, they, they've been talking about this for years. But the problem was, though, they had to find a distributor to get to it. But MGM secretly owns the rights to the first two films through Orion Pictures. And now that Orion had been revived since 2013, now they finally get a chance to uh, release it themselves through uh, United Artists Releasing. Yeah, which this was um, their comeback as a joint venture between Anna Perina Pictures and MGM. <laughs> Yeah, Metro Boyne Mayor. So this time, both Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter reprising their roles as Bill and Ted. I mean, now we they're already in their older selves, in their 50s. Almost going to be nearly their 60s by then. They now have daughters, which I know it seemed like a controversy at that point on, where at first we thought we had uh, sons, you know, little Bill and Little Ted, but I guess they sort of had to change things together, or maybe that's exactly what the writer Ed Solomon had in mind. But it, it kind of confuses everyone. 
But it's a story where they failed to write a, a prophesied song to unite the world and save reality. But they're also joining in with the help of their daughters, Sophia uh, and uh, Billy. Yes, so. Now they, they're come together to actually uh, try to find all these artists, historical artists, so that way, as well as Bill and Ted themselves, you know, trying to find exactly where they can find it in the future, so so that way they can come together and fix everything that's going wrong, because already time traveling is, is getting worse, like now they're sending out uh, pretty much everyone from um, different time periods and and going all the way through the future um, which we join in with uh, the great leader a female of course who's the most powerful person in the universe who sent out um, her daughter uh, Kelly who happens to be the daughter of Rufus I guess we did learn that, yes, Rufus did got married to the great leader. And I know um, George Carlin only makes an appearance, but in holographic form. I'm going to establish that. At least they did the best not to recast him, because that would kind of ruin his honor. But I know. If the movie had been made in the 2000s, because I know MGM um, still owned the rights at the time, and they still do. Um, if they had worked on it back then, I think maybe we, we still could have had George Carlin reprising the role one last time until his death in 2008. Yeah, so I kind of wish they had done that a long time ago. Then, but I know. We had to wait a few decades for that. Anyway, the, the movie had just finally got released um, at um, several theaters nationwide, and it's also available through Premium BOD, yeah, Video On Demand, so now I, I get a chance to see it. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to um, explain at the end, um, once I get to the review, I mean, what are my thoughts are, right? Anyway, so let's begin. It stars Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, Christian Scholl, Samara Reeven, the daughter of Hugo Reeven, you know, from the Matrix movies. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Bridget Lundy Payne, uh, William Sadler, yes, Def, makes an appearance. <laughs> Anthony Kerrigan, Erin Hayes, Jama Mays, another uh, set of actresses to replace the previous ones, but I already know who Jama Mays is, because she was from the TV show Glee, and uh, she was in the, the movie uh, Paul Blart's Mall Cop, as well as the film uh, Red Eye uh, from Wes Craven, among others. Hal Landon Jr., good to see him again. Uh, Beck Bennett, Kit Cudi, which is some recent rapper that they got, Amy Stolch, Holland Taylor, as you may know, she was from the TV show Who's and Buddies, with Tom Hanks and Peter Scolari. Um, I know she went on to do a lot of work over the years. So. Julian Bell, Wynn Butler, Das Man still, Jeremiah Kraft. Daniel Dorr, Sharon Glee, and Patty Ann Miller. Uh, with cameo appearances by George Carlin as a hologram, uh, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters and former uh, Nirvana drummer. Will Yankovic makes an appearance, but probably a short one. Uh, Kelly Carlin, the daughter of George. Um, Guillermo uh, Rodriguez and Nathan Head. It's written by 
the same writers of the first two films, Chris Matterson and Ed Solomon, and it's directed by Dean Parasol, best known for giving us the movie Galaxy Quest with Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, and Alan Rickman, and also went on to do Red 2, and with Bruce Willis, and all the rest. <laughs> Okay. The movie began set in 2020, which is the present time of this year. And Billy S. Preston Esquire and Ted Fyodor Logan, both played by Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves, had failed to write a prophesied song to unite the world. Yeah, because um, during the past, as we saw some flashbacks, especially going to the last sequel, Focus Journey, where we do get to see them perform as the Wild Stylings, joining in with Death, as well as um, Station, back to his alien duo, playing the bungle drums and all. Yeah, Death is like rapping and all, and, and the princesses are just playing in the backgrounds, you know, both Elizabeth and Joanna. And then I know they, they, they sort of cheated, going flash forward to where they got better, as their adult selves and yeah we learned that yeah they have babies uh, which I know there's a controversy about that thinking that they have sons you know because they say little Bill little Ted but at that point on they basically just had daughters which are Fia and Billy they're both played by Samantha Weaving and Bridget Lundy Payne okay so therefore as decades gone by, they're now in their 50s, they are performing as the Wild Starlands in different places at different times. Um, I guess I forgot to mention, going back to Bogus Journey, I'm sorry, was that Christy Damalas uh, was taken over, you know, through Val via satellite. He actually did spot it, uh, William Sadler playing uh, the fodder. So he was a dual role right there, too. Um, of course, both of them, well, both Bill and Ted and him were playing the time game. He apparently got trapped in a cage. But then he got the gun, was ready to shoot him, just, which at this rate, he shot, and it just says, Wild Styling's Rules, for the flag. Yeah. <laughs> and all that. <laughs> and of course, got arrested. And, yeah, you did see a lot of newspaper articles, too. Um, yeah, even the one that they used for the movie poster while the song, God Gave Rock and Roll to You by Kiss. Yeah. God gave rock and roll to you. Gave rock and roll to you. Playing a song for everyone. Yeah, that song. Anyway, now we're going to go back to this story. Uh, time and space have begun to collapse. That's where we get to see, you know, all these historical figures from different times appearing in the present time because it's going out of control with the time paradox. And it's all happening in San Dimas, California. Yes, and both Bill and Ted were just performing their music, especially during a wedding. Yeah, you did spot it, uh, Ted's father, um, Logan, played by uh, Hal Landon Jr. He did spotted Missy, yeah, which are now their former stepmother, and now married to Deacon, yeah, the um, Ted's brother, played by uh, Amy uh, Storch. So wow, and of course um, Deacon Logan is played by Beck Bennett. It seems kind of fucked up at this point. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know I curse, but whatever. Um, therefore, their wives, the princesses, uh, Joanna and Elizabeth, that now are played by uh, Jama Mays and Erin Hayes, um, they had to go to a, um, a counseling meeting with Julie and Bill playing a psychiatrist of the marriage counselor to explain what's going on, feeling like, you know, by then they're going to probably end up being divorced. Or Bill and Ted. So, knowing that by then Ted 
and confides Bill that he, they will not believe that they will be able to write the perfect song to unite the world and save reality. So Kelly, played by Christian Shaw, who's the daughter of Bill and Ted's deceased time-traveling guide, Rufus, who was played by George Carlin, by the way, as I mentioned already, shown in holographic form uh, once they went inside um, the particular layer. Yeah, I mean, you do get to see the phone booth, but you then get to see another time-traveling um, device, which looks like an egg that Kelly actually showed up on. Anyway, they arrived to be taking them down to the future, where they met Kelly's mother, the great leader, played by Holland Taylor, who tells them that they have until 7.17 p.m., which could be either Eastern Standard Time or Pacific Standard Time, that particular night to write a song or reality will collapse forever. So realizing that they will not be able to write a song, because I know they're having trouble with it, and just so they can try to get in on time. Bill and Ted uses uh, Rufus Time Traveling Phone Booth to steal the song. You know, they're cheating themselves for, for the future. And then we begin to see exactly who they are as it fast forwards to where it happens um, later in those couple of years. Like, now we begin to find out that, yes, um, we get to see Bill and Ted as themselves older but wiser um, but they end up acting like dicks like assholes so it was very basically unsuccessful as it's turning out to be and it only gets worse too when then they have to flash forward to another time where they became uh, well <laughs> prisoners that were actually <laughs> all buffed up and they're and they're performing a different song it's a prison song and all um also um because i know i'm going to flash forward to they actually travel all the way back to the mansion where they begin to spot themselves you know talking in a different accent and apparently they're becoming more successful than ever like now they really uh fix things through. So now they have their own mansion of anything. Although they didn't realize that it was actually Dave Grohl's mansion. Yes, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters and also Nirvana. Um, so now they know that they're in trouble when, when their later selves, you know, actually gave them the music and that turned out to be fake. So now they're about to be escape, and then his father, uh, Ted Logan, had came along, and his father uh, Logan came along to to go after them. You know. Oh, and by the way, um, since the great leader obviously couldn't trust them, she also had to send out a robot to uh, execute them if they're not going to be able to work out and that and the time traveling robot is named Dennis and he's played by um, Anthony Kerrigan sorry so hoping that this will restore the balance to the universe themselves but Kelly travels back to the present to warn them so that's where they meet the daughters uh, Billy and Thea and they decided to help the fathers create the song. So, using Kelly's time machine, uh, Billy and Fia had recruited all these historical musicians, Jimi Hendrix, Louis Armstrong, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Lane Lynn, and a cave woman. Which then, of course, they got Kit Cootie to join because, uh, well, I guess he was time displaced. Um, 
but therefore Dennis just came around accidentally uh, execute all of them and they wound up being sent to hell the same way they sent uh, Logan to hell um, yeah which they came so now he realized he made a big mistake also Dennis does uh, stutter a lot too like he's not exactly who he is anymore and he felt bad about what he did uh, therefore now uh, both Bill and Ted had went all the way to the future somewhere in the, um, when they turn out to be already in their deathbeds or what seems to be like they're in their room together at a local um, retirement home uh, they actually found the music themselves that they actually created uh, through a USB flash drive which actually has the time and it was set somewhere in MP46 like it might have been somewhat of a, a concert uh, performance that, that set right to it well we learned that it wasn't really that it was actually on the freeway ramp which I know both Deacon and Missy were about to head off for their honeymoon and already you know all these uh, historical figures are showing up one by one completely and then when Bill and Ted had went straight to hell uh, along with everyone around uh, they went straight to death himself played by William Sadler so we got to see him again after all this time we learned that yet yeah, they broke off and things were not going so well as it seems but then with both Billy and Thea decide to go back to death to see if they can fix all these problems well that's where they had to that's where they had to stick together and just go all the way to um, MP46 which is the freeway ramp so now together they can perform the song that will help unite the world and save reality <laughs> I know I'm repeating myself, but who cares? So that's that, which is at the Interstate uh, 210. MP46 is basically just the uh, exit zone. And of course, there's a twist where we begin to find out that it was actually Billy and Fia that created it, you know, through their USB flash drive, and was given as a tribute to both Preston and Logan, of course. So they knew it was them the whole time that did it. And now, even joining in with Kit Cootie and everything, they all helped pitched in. And they just became a blast. So they helped out. They worked everything together. And now things are actually back to normal. So now they're having the happiest times of their lives again without feeling very bored and everything. So, so the universe has been repaired. And they're all reunited to their proper time periods. So there you go. And um, after all this time for the third installment, I gotta say, I had high expectations for the movie. The moment I saw the trailer, the moment I've been hearing about it, and all in talks, I know because, you know, since we're in this dumbed down generation we're in, where everything has to be all. PC culture, everything has to be woke, forced, and all. That's what I was afraid of too. Like everyone has to act sexist and all this other crap, and they then they have to focus on the internet and all this technology and stuff. Yeah, we get it. I I already know, I already know that already. Well, it turned out to be a pleasant surprise. I actually liked the movie. I mean, it could have been worse. I mean, much worse. It could have been something like uh, like most comedy sequels we had. Especially ones that came out uh, during the past couple decades ago. Which I know it's, it's uh, years or decades too late, but they kind of make it up for it actually. And it had a heart to it. And 
it had the energy that they could. Um, but therefore, yes, it does have issues, and I'm going to get to that. I would say this, though, was that it's great to see both Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter reprising their roles for the first time in over 30 years, or maybe perhaps 29 years, because the last one came out in 91. So it's nearly at this point. Um, however, I would say Alex is pretty much in character with Bill, so he still has a bit of the voice, considering that he is older and a little deeper. Um, Keanu, on the other hand, though, as Ted, just sounds more mellow. Like, he almost pretty much is John Wick, I mean, with his persona. So he sounds as deeper as he can be. He doesn't sound like a like the kind of dude we all know him. But I understand. I mean, they're they're getting old, so they're not exactly who they sound anymore. But therefore, the chemistry is still there. That's all that matters. You know, at least they didn't go around, you know, you know, separating each other at this point on. They they've been together. I mean, they might have had some troubles in the past, but at that point on, they, they fixed things through. It's great to see the supporting cast again. I mean, for the most well, some of them, because at least they did reprise, though they, there are times when they had to replace the actors, too. I mean, I'd be even amazed that maybe half of them were still alive, so. All except for George Carlin, you know. Um, but therefore, it was also nice to see um, William Sadler reprising his role as Duff again, but I kind of wish he was in the movie more. I understand. Because, after all, all three films are short. You know, they're fast-paced, as they seem. But maybe they could have added a couple more to, to go right through it. Um, as for the daughters, uh, for Bill and Ted, um, they were great. Um, I thought they did a great job. I mean, they almost seemed like the, they were the equivalent of themselves. You know, in fact, uh, both uh, Billy and, and Thea sound pretty much like both Bill and Ted when they were teenagers. So they kind of felt a bit dim-witted at times, but at the same time, they're, they're actually pretty smart. So they knew exactly what they were trying to do, and, and they were helping them out. See, it shows that, you know, you can actually help out your families together, you know, without failing. And that's what they're trying to do. You know, they're trying to save them. They're not trying to, like, force themselves out. You know, like, I'm, I'm doing this all on my own bullshit. You know, like, I'm better than you are. I'm glad they didn't go for that, that remark because that would be really stupid. We're supposed to have them as a team. You know, they care for them, they love them, as a family, that's exactly what they're supposed to do. They, they don't go around into fights or anything like that. Yeah, and, and plus, we do get to see them in the garage, you know, they're just you know, playing the music and they had everything, they showed it to them and they realized how cool they are. So, thank God for that. Um, I... Anyway, but back to the issues I have. Um, there are times when I feel like the great leader, like I thought maybe she was going to be the villain in the movie. And I know, because there was a lot of females in the film too that, that goes right to it. And, and again, nothing. there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Because I'm not a sexist or monogamous or anything like that. Thank God for that, because I respect them too. Um, anyway... I thought she was going to be the villain because she had to send out the robot uh, Dennis to kill them. And I'm like, why? Why do that? I mean, come on. Y you know they're going to try to fix everything. I mean, th that's not smart. Yeah, I mean, at that point on, she was being a bit of a bitch. Yeah, and Kelly really realized that too. And Kelly did an excellent job too playing the... And, and I'll say this, uh, Crystal Shaw did an excellent job playing Kelly. Um, 
kind of acts pretty much like Rufus in a way. Like, yes, I mean, Rufus would never, ever do that. Rufus will never send a robot to execute them. See, that's why the guy's smart. So the great leader's full of shit, though. But then, as far as that's concerned, I mean, she did uh, change her ways after that. I mean, she realized that she did a stupid thing. Um, Kit Cootie was totally unnecessary. Incredibly pointless. Why do we need a rapper? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. They could have just had Dave Bro instead, which I, I wish it wasn't a short cameo. He could have had like more to do. He could have been the drummer actually. Because I think they had the cave woman to be the drummer. That's why they, they really kinda of screwed up a little bit. But all um well, I did actually spot it, uh, we all Yankee Vic a little bit, but I almost wish I had spotted him a little more. So, like, I, I would have loved to see him actually speak or, or something like that. Um, I know, it's kind of confusing, too. Um, the special effects in the movie, I mean, compared to the effects in the first two films, of course, the CGI in the films were very primitive, and they had their own practical effects when they did it. This one just has pretty much the CGI that you see in today's movies. Um, it's not horrible, but it's what it is. I mean, for that budget alone, because this is only $25 million budget right here. Um, I know, I wish it was like everything that the first film had. Like, I wish the, the special effects were quite different, especially when they go into the, the circuits of time through the, the phone booths. And yeah, it's great that we got to see them actually go on there. Same goes with Bill and Ted. So it's nice to see what the time circuits look like. But it just looks so pasty. You know, too uh, light bluish in a way. So that's what I noticed too. Um, anyway, uh, another thing too is the music. Um, where's the heavy metal music that they had, that the first two films did? I mean, I, I noticed that uh, they did have a song by Weezer, and I believe they had a song by Cold War Kids, if you ever heard of those guys. But there hasn't been any, um, whatsoever, any heavy metal music, only maybe just a little bit of it, though. So, to me, that kind of ruins the the magic of them all, but, like, geez, I mean, can you at least have pick up some other great uh, bands out there that they could play? I mean, I, I know heavy metal isn't quite the same as decades follow, and I know, because we're in the decade where everything's pop music. I mean, come on, you know? I mean, was this the best they could do? So those were the issues I have with the film, but, other than that, though, it's a fresh start, and possibly the last. I mean, it's great that we got a sequel. It's been long awaited. You know, I think at least we finally got something good for a change since this decade we're living in, yet alone this year, because of this pandemic that's been following around. It's been getting worse and worse, and... And it's been a while since I've seen the last current movie of this particular summer, which sadly this summer has been totally cruel. They made it up for it. And I would love to see the film again. And I definitely will see it again. And I just have fun with it. I mean, all I can say is it's better than nothing. I mean, it could have been worse. But they did what they can, and I'm glad we got it. So, to me, it's, it's as excellent as it could be, and as bodacious as it can go on for, for our own future sake. So, there you go. That's Bill and Ted Face the Music, and I give the movie four stars.
I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and remember, be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes. Catch you later. Bye.